Today we're looking at structural engineering and I want to look at what caramel and concrete have in common and how some sweet treats can help explain some of the incredible structural engineering in the world around us. Now you've probably heard about concrete before. Concrete is a brittle material. It's made up of aggregate which is effectively small and large rocks and then cement which binds everything together. But Concrete and cement have been around since Roman times, but since then it's evolved quite a bit to be able to do taller structures and wider spans than ever before. This type of concrete is why we have structures like the Burj Khalifa and the Shard here in London. So what have engineers done to improve humble concrete to create truly epic structures? That's what we're looking at today. So to start with, I want to talk about pure concrete and actually a good comparison to this is just using humble caramel. So what I've done is I've created a little caramel bridge of my own, a pure caramel which I've got over here and all I've done is I've cast this in a silicone mold and you can see it's lovely and see-through. All this is is just um, sugar and water that's been heated to a specific temperature and uh, you'll see it's pretty thin but uh, I can see all the way through and I'm going to do a really simple test. This is just kitchen science at its best. So down here, I've just got four little supports. I'm going to pop this in the middle and we're going to do a little strength test here to simulate a bit of a shock loading on the bridge. So I've just got something from my DIY box, just a little bolt. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this and see where it breaks. And I'm anticipating it's not going to be terribly strong. So. Let's go ahead and test that. Okay, can do a few centimetres, a bit higher. Still all right, higher still, about 20 centimetres. Let's go for 30 centimetres. There it goes. So what we see here is a brittle fracture. So it's broken just like a shard of glass. And if you looked at caramel, a bit like concrete under the microscope, it's made up of lots of crystals. And crystals perform very well in compression, but not so well when it comes to tension, unless they're metallic. This is actually what the Romans found when they were using cement. Um, that's why they had to use structures like arches, which are almost entirely in compression. You didn't see large single span bridges. So engineers have had to be a little bit crafty. So what have they actually done? Well, we reinforce it with steel rebar. A, a nice way to think of this is if you imagine I've just got four really simple wooden blocks here and if you imagine these as my crystals I have to push them together to be able to lift this up or else they fall apart. If I take something like a rubber band and I just put this around you can imagine this is like my tensioned steel bar that I'm setting in my concrete then I'm able to just lift this up from either end and it supports itself. And that's effectively the role of the steel. We're making a composite because the steel performs well in tension, the concrete does well in compression, and that's reinforced concrete, enabling us to have a much lighter structure that can span a further distance. And believe it or not, we can make a reinforced caramel to test the theory. But first of all, I've got to show you how to make a caramel. So let's head over to the hob. So there's two ways of making a caramel. You can go for the dry route, which is just sugar. I've got about 200 grams of caster sugar here. Or you can go for a wet caramel uh, where you add a little bit of water. Now, I find that a little bit more reliable when it comes to not getting the dreaded crystallization. And all I do is I just add a few tablespoons of water around the outside of the pan to help dissolve the sugar. Now, you might be wondering, surely if I'm adding water, it's going to affect the final consistency of my caramel? Well, no, because by the time it's caramelized, all that water will have evaporated off. And this is, in fact, why we have different temperatures on a sugar thermometer, um, which correspond to different textures, is it's all to do with the percentage sugar concentration in your end product. And that's how you go from something soft, like a, a pouring caramel, all the way through to hard candy and caramel at the very upper end. So all I've done is put that in a very clean pan. And then the rule with caramel is just gently swirl. Don't stir because that might create nucleation sites and you might get crystallization. So just gently swirl and keep it on a fairly high heat. So whilst that's heating up, my caramel, I can pour into a bar as the one you just saw, but I can also use it as the glue for my reinforcement. And this is where I reveal my reinforcement is in fact something ductile, a bit like steel cable, strawberry laces. They're nice and stretchy and uh, they can withstand the temperatures very briefly of being dunked in the caramel. So effectively I'll be winching these through and attaching them to the bottom of a caramel bar and that forms my reinforcement. 
So once that's got to a nice golden brown, we're ready for our reinforcement. So I'm going to turn that off. Now, the reason why I don't put my strawberry laces straight in a mold and pour the caramel on top is they will dissolve. The strawberry laces have gelatin, so they can deal with a bit of heat, but they can't deal with being immersed. So instead, what I've got is one bar that I've already made of pure caramel. And remember, we want to put the reinforcement on the side that's going to be at the base, because that's going to be in tension. So I've got my strawberry laces, and you want to just cut them to measure. So these are quite long, so I can afford to cut these in two. So I'll just break them in two in that case. And I'm going to use eight. And just check my caramel's looking good. So just give those a little clip. And then you effectively want to be very careful because this is incredibly hot, but I'm effectively going to just drape this through the caramel. So I chose a large pan for this and I just want to drape just the base of it into the caramel, bring it over and then quickly set it on my beam and then just press it down with the teaspoon just to get a good bond like that. And then I usually do it, you want to work fairly swiftly but calmly you want to do this roughly symmetrically and then just press down so you get a good seal with each one. So when you've got a lovely copper brown caramel, you can just pour it into your mold and then just pop the pan in a sink of hot water and it'll all dissolve off. So that'll set up pretty quickly, but I've got one I prepared earlier, so I'll just bring that one in. So here's my one I made earlier. It's a shade darker, but uh, even more toasty. And I'm going to do exactly the same test that I did before. So last time it was about 25 centimeters that it smashed and it completely shattered, as you can see here. So reinforcement on the bottom. And I'm going to go straight in at a similar height to last time and drop it on top and just watch what happens. Three, two, one. So you'll notice I get an impact pattern which is similar to last time, but it's maintained its structural integrity. And this is exactly the same thing that happens with steel reinforcement. So if you look at concrete bridges up close that are reinforced, you'll find micro cracks in the concrete. And it's not a concern because they're still performing their job in compression. The steel is absorbing the tension. You're now at the point where we've got some self-healing concretes that can fill those gaps, but it performs in exactly the same way. It's why you have those lines in the windows at school, safety glass, so that if it gets hit by something, it can crack, but it doesn't shatter and release the pieces. So next time you're making a caramel cantilever, make sure to include some edible reinforcement to make it go the extra mile.